Hello and welcome to the 10th webinar in our 2017 SAP Success Factors HR Live Demo Series. Today's session is on SAP Enable Now. My name is Jesse Labenwolf and I'm going to cover some brief housekeeping. We'll be addressing your questions at the end of the demonstration, but you're encouraged to submit questions as you think of them using the Q&A panel on the left side of your console. If you experience any technical issues, please let me know via that same Q&A panel and I'll help you out shortly. Today's session is being recorded and we'll be sending out a link to the replay of this webinar in the next week or two. Keep an eye out for it in your email. Finally, I'd like to highlight the resource list which should be on the right side of your console. It has a few assets for you to download as well as a link for you to register for the full webinar series. You can access this list by pressing on the green icon at the bottom of your console. And with that, we're ready to dive in. Today's webinar will be led by Jesse Bernal, who is a Senior Solutions Consultant here at SAP Success Factors. Jesse, the floor is yours. Thank you. So jumping into the solution today, um, we're going to be talking about SAP Enable now. So some of you may have joined thinking it was going to be Workforce Performance Builder. It is the same product. It's just been rebranded. So the new name for the product is SAP Enable Now. What we're going to look at is where does this fit within the landscape of success factors? So if we think about success factors learning and our LMS capabilities, very often you'll have some type of solution uh, to create content. So when we think about content, we're really thinking about SAP Enable Now to fit in this space. So um, from a content perspective, uh, very often you have other solutions. So what we see with SAP Enable Now, it can kind of fit the, the breadth of all these other solutions. So if you think about Captivate, Nesema, and Walk Me, and Camtasia, and all these other solutions that are in this content world, where does Enable Now fit? And what we see with our customers is that we're able to have a single solution that can do all of those pieces and parts that a SEMA fits, that Storyline does, that Captivate does, that Walk Me does. So we're trying to fit that, that space where how do we have a single solution to really meet our content strategy um, to help enable us with success factors learning and our LMS capabilities. Um, obviously, we're, we're looking at compliance training, talent development, and also external audiences in this space. Um, and also, how do we make this right a beautiful, engaging experience for everyone to have an experience with consistent content across all platforms? So when we look at uh, content and how, how do we embrace the complexity that's in this space, I think for a lot of people, content can be very complex. Um, a lot of you deal with MOOCs, so you're dealing with, um, you know, content for your LMS, eBooks, um, compliance training, so all these different pieces and parts. How do we make sure we're really embracing the future and looking at the content that our, your users need every day? Um, also, how can we make sure that you're saving money? How can we make sure that you're not creating content over and over again in maybe different platforms? So very often what I see working with customers you're, you're creating content, but the content's being created in Storyline for your LMS. Uh, it might be in Walk Me for your performance support. It's in a SEMA to create a video. And I've had three different people produce the same content for the same group of users. Um, however, the effort was duplicated by three. So what we're trying to get to is how do we manage that more easy? How do we get to an easier way of managing our content uh, with a solution like Enable Now? Um, one thing I want to make sure is is real, right, is we all understand the struggle with content is, is very real for all of our customers. Um, some of the statistics that we look at here are the execution gap. So 71% of executives believe um, their companies are weak when it comes to taking advantage of learning media. So um, again, working with a lot of customers across the globe, I see this often. Um, people are taking your LMS courses because they have to take them. Um, very often you see people go in and, and they start multitasking, which you might be doing right now as you're listening to me, right? So people want to learn. They start into an e-learning or an LMS course. Uh, they hit next. They get to the questions. They take the questions. Um, if they pass, great. If do they really can, are they really comprehending? Are they really taking in the content? Um, that's questionable at times, right? So even with our media where we're creating work instructions and guides and job aids to help them get through their job, are they effective? Um, I think that's a, a big question, right, for a lot of a lot of people in their companies. Also, 62% of organizations say that content development is um, a high priority. 
So I think, uh, again, when I go talk to customers, this is a priority. Um, you have groups that create this content. I think some of our biggest challenges in companies today, uh, which we'll see here on the next slide, are L&D resources for learning and development, 12% fewer professionals uh, in the workplace. So very often, even though we say it's a requirement and we need this every day, very seldom do I see an organization have a large L&D group, right? So very, very often I find companies with one or two resources that are focused on learning and development for their entire corporation or, you know, a group of five or a group of ten, um, and they're trying to manage, you know, 50, 60, 80,000 employees. That can be challenging, and how do we keep up with content, and how do we make sure that it's being developed? Um, and then when you look at the time it takes, so one hour to create content, on average is about $1,700, so real close to about $2,000 per course content that I'm creating. So it can be expensive. So we think about all of this knowledge that we need to get to people. Again, how do we make sure we're leveraging the tools the best we can? So looking at how do people learn today, really what I see a big shift, and I'm going to focus on some of that as we go into Enable Now, on the job experience. So even though formal and informal training definitely still used today, um, we're seeing that on the job is really the trend. So when we start to think about um, the future of learning, right, that, that digital transformation that everyone's going through, um, the, the consumer, the user, your your person who's consuming knowledge really wants that in more bite-sized pieces. Um, I can even say for myself, right, when, when you get uh, new technology, you kind of just want to figure it out on your own, or I want to ask someone, um, or I want very small segments of information. I just want help when I'm stuck on something. I want to try to figure it out on my own, but help me when I'm stuck, right? So how do I get to that type of learning um, and content that can be consumed by my, by my end users? So what you're going to see as we go through is content isn't simple, right? So it's not necessarily the most simple thing to, to approach. And, you know, I have the image of the carrot here. You know, how are we getting people to, um, you know, engage with your learning content? Are you assigning it to people and you're forcing them, right? Are we, are we beating them with that stick and saying, you have to take this learning? Or how do I entice them with that carrot of, it's there, I want you to use it. So how can we change the way people start to consume? Um, also, integration, and, and we think about how can we integrate it in our system and it just be there all the time. Um, and, and really, one of the other things, too, is uh, people are looking for that magic bullet, right? So what's the magic bullet to kind of conquer this space? So I think there's uh, multiple approaches, uh, but what I want to talk to you today, again, SAP Enable Now, formerly at Workforce Performance Builder, uh, so we're going to go through, and I'm going to talk about really what is the solution and, and what are we trying to engage and approach here. So when we think about Enable Now, really what we're trying to uh, leverage is all of those components that we talked about earlier, right, the formal training, the informal learning, as well as performance support. I really think where we differentiate ourselves in this space is that we can do all of these things. So very often, again, as I talked about competition in this space, um, there are certain tools that you use to create your LMS courses uh, or Success Factors learning courses, right? So a lot of you use Storyline or Captivate or those solutions to create what I call book pages. So in Enable Now, those are called book pages or what we would use for formal training. In the informal learning and e-learning space, uh, a SEMA for videos, um, again, Captivate sometimes used in this space, but you're really looking for those e-learning type courses, um, quizzes, those types of functions. And then from a performance support, we're really seeing things like Walk Me and other solutions where it's on-screen guidance uh, in that space. Um, however, Enable Now can meet the needs of all those different um, areas of support needed from a learning perspective. So this is what we call you know, modalities or multi-modality uh, approach. So what you're seeing is from a formal, informal, and on-the-job approach, Enable Now can, can allow you to reuse knowledge objects across all of these different um, forms of learning. So the whole idea is instead of needing to create one, two, three, four, five courses, create a single course or create single content, and then let that be leveraged for your SCORM or LMS component 
for success factors learning, let it be leveraged for your videos, let it be leveraged for e-learning, let it be leveraged for on-screen guidance. So how do we provide all of that in, in one single solution? So as we go through, some things that I want to make sure are important. Um, one of the things that I don't think a lot of people understand with Enable Now, especially in the SAP footprint, um, Enable Now is actually embedded in some of our solutions. It's the future of our roadmap. What we're trying to do here is provide content to you um, and, and help you along this path. So instead of it just being content that you have to create on your own, let SAP and success factors create content for you and enable you with some of our solutions. So with one of those, um, SAP S4 HANA, um, we, have, we have content already built, right? We have content embedded in the solution. So when you click on help and it guides you through how to use the tool, it's already built for you on standard functionality. If you want to customize or change that, you need Enable Now to customize or change that. You're also seeing this all over the place in our footprint. So um, some of you may have heard of SFALC or our, our Success Factors Learning Hub component where you can log in and take some of the admin training and other pieces in part to educate yourself. Um, so looking at content that we're building and creating uh, for you to consume. So SAP is using SAP solutions to create content for Solution Manager and TechEd and Boot Camps and other solutions. So this is just important to understand that we're also on that same path of SAP is using SAP um, to get you content and not, not you be in this position to constantly be creating everything on your own. So, um, again, the whole idea of multimodality, really what I want to make sure is, is making sense here, and you'll see this when I go demo the solution, I'm going to go jump in right after this slide, is the knowledge objects that can be reused. So the whole idea is I have a single knowledge object that I can use for my SCORM or classroom training that I put in my LMS, my e-learning to be self guided e-learning, my on-demand e-learning, my performance support, but the whole idea of, is reusing this content um, and being in that multimodality concept of knowledge objects. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go jump over into the solution here, um, and, and I'll get this started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the art of the possible. So what I'm really going to show you is what would this look like from the perspective of an end user? So what would I expect if I was in a solution? How would this look? So I'm going to go to where we are, are fundamentally different um, in this space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit play here to get uh, my window to show up. So um, what you should start to see is um, success factors on the screen. Um, what you're seeing is this is, I'm going to move this bar around. This is the desktop assistant component. It can be moved around your screen wherever you would like that to be. Um, I can open or close my help. So this is where we're getting into more of that performance support piece, right? So on-screen help, I'm in a solution, um, is there things that can help me? Now, I also can get you your LMS content, I can get context, I can get other things to the screen as well, okay? So what you're going to see when I'm in here are some components. This here is contextual help. So contextual help, I can have things pop up on the screen. This is created with Enable Now. Um, a question mark, right? So some context that I want to provide to the screen. What is this used for? Why would I use this content? That's also provided. Now, if I click on one of these guides, I'm going to start with a simulation. So this is where we're getting into the multimodality piece, right? So I've created a, a recording. I can turn that into a video. The video now can be consumed on screen, or I could also consume this in one of my LMS courses. So now as I go, okay, select a direct report, I click on a direct report, I say, what do I do next? It says click on actions. So the whole idea here is I have a video I can interact with and go back and forth between the solution. So I can say, I need help, I don't need help, and go back and forth. So if I close out of this, and I go back to my home, um, I'm going to come back here and I say, okay, now what I want to show you a guided tour. The guided tours are where it actually is going to hover on the screen um, and show you uh, what to click on. What do I click on first? What do I click on next? So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the guided tour here. So let me click on guided tour. Um, what you're going to see here is it will actually go through, and uh, depending on language, you could have 
different language show up. Um, it's also going to go through and show me what to click on. So here it says click on actions, and then it wants me to click on compensation. Um, you'll also see I have translation on right now where it's actually telling me how to do this in Spanish. You can have it also translate the other items on screen as well. So if there was other things you wanted translated, you also can do that as well. So the whole idea here is guide me through the instructions of how to do something on screen. Okay, so the whole idea here is that I'm taking that content that you normally would deliver in an LMS or content that you would deliver in a work instruction and I'm providing it to you on screen. So this is where we really differentiate ourselves in this space, right, as I said before. So other things that you can do within Enable Now, um, you also can provide guidelines directly in the toolbar. So you can see here, here's some pay and change basis guidelines, right? So here's some guidelines that I want to make sure you're aware of based on what I'm trying to do, maybe as a manager or an end user within the solution. You also can add what are post-it notes. So you can have this follow you in the solution. So this um, is a reminder I need to do something. So I'm going to just say this is a test. It's different than the Microsoft Post-it notes. So what you'll see, I'm in success factors. Here's my note. If I go over into Word, um, and once I click on Word, that Post-it note goes away. So it's going to follow me based on the application I'm in. So I actually could give myself notes, like maybe there's a cost center I don't remember, so I could put a cost center or certain information that you're trying to remember um, as a manager or as a user when you're in an application. So what you're seeing here, again, I can use this on any application. So this isn't just necessarily for success factors. It could be used for anything. So I just have Word opened as an example. So if I'm in Word, I can do the same thing. So if I say insert a picture um, in Word, um, what you're going to see is now I have a grayed out screen. It says click insert. Um, now it's going to come up and say, okay, click on picture, right? So it's guiding me through a process of how do I do something. Um, so the whole idea here is that I can have the tool um, guide me through any application on any process. So whether I'm in Word or if I'm in success factors, as I move around in my application, it actually is going and saying, what help can I provide you based on where you're at, okay? So the whole idea here is that we have a capability of allowing this content to follow you through. Now, from an application library, I'm also just going to show you an example. Um, this is what we call our application library where we have um, the content now showing up for non-IT trainings or more of an LMS type uh, training. So here um, I could either launch this directly from SuccessFactors Learning or I also can have e-book e or storybook type um, learning content, right? So what you're seeing here is now I have the capability of going through um, a book page, right? What we would, what you would see a storyline or captivate content that you might be using in LMS today. So this is just an example of going through and uh, fixing an oil repair, right? So this might be for uh, plant maintenance within your organization. So this is a, a book on uh, that. Uh, I also have other items, right? So this is just uh, a, another play one. This is SAP pasta sample. Um, this is just going to go through and show um, another component, right? Uh, I want this in English, and it's actually going to talk and talk through items um, as we go through the learning, right? So the whole idea is that I can go through and take a course. I can build all this content with Enable Now as well. So don't just get in your mind that, it's well, it's only point-click help. Um, yes, it can do that, and that's where I would say we're significantly different. Um, but what it's also providing is the capability of being able to create your LMS content to deliver as well. Now, one of the unique things that I really like about this solution is um, when you're in this learning library, again, and I'm just going to go back to a use case. If you think about um, maybe plant maintenance or your group of workers on the floor, um, if you're in a manufacturing environment, uh, QR codes is another way we can distribute content. So the idea of scanning a QR code when I'm physically on uh, a manufacturing floor or maybe I need uh, MSDS sheet for safety and health or you're trying to get content to a user on how to fix something, right? So your consumer, which normally this may be in the LMS or somewhere else, could actually scan a QR code. And when they scan the QR code, this content would then show up 
on a mobile device where they then could consume how do I do a repair, what's the MSDS sheet, what's the safety guidelines, right? Those types of things can also be done with this tool as well. So um, I'm going to go jump back to my presentation here. I'm going to jump out of the demo mode and we'll go back over into uh, the presentation mode. So what you're going to see now is different ways that we can get this content to uh, end users. So you're going to see the capabilities of um, LMS. So from an LMS perspective, like I said, we can create those book pages, have the book pages come back to the screen, um, and make sure that you can publish that content for scoring, SCORM compliant type things. So quizzes, tests, those types of things. Also from an application menu, we also can embed help um, so if you think about your SAP solutions, if you have other SAP solutions, um, an ECC or R3 or R4 are those solutions that would be in your SAP landscape, um, we can embed into a help menu. We also can embed our help into Microsoft Office products help menu. So the whole idea of a drop down, I click on help and now I have a catalog I can click on to provide help uh, to my end user when they're in the solution. Um, Context-based based help. So the whole idea of that guidance, right, finding items on the screen and guiding them through how to do something, so context-based. Um, video portals, so the whole idea of being able to get videos to the end user. Um, so the same content that I've created uh, for an LMS course, I could turn into a video, and they could also consume that as a video content. Um, reference library, so I showed you a little bit in the application library where you also could go search content. I could type in a reference item um, and pull that content back for the end user to consume. Uh, mobile support, so getting the content to you on a mobile device. Uh, test scripts, so I didn't really touch on this when I was demoing, but this is an uh, important integration point. You also can uh, create test scripts from the same content that you use to create um, training, right? So if I've done screen capture record for training concepts or for my LMS course, I also then can turn that into a test script. So we have uh, direct integrations with HPQC. Um, we also have uh, integrations into ECAT or other testing solutions as well, where we can create a test script either manually, where they actually would use an instruction from the solution to go create a test script, um, or they actually could go into HPQC and go through those. So HP Quality Center or HPQC is the acronym I'm referring to. Um, and then BPM or business process modeling, so integrations into different business process modeling solutions as well. So taking, again, that end-to-end -end solution and turning it into more of a business process guide um, as well as business process modeling from a step uh, perspective. So how do I get through my business process from that, from that aspect? So um, some very important pieces there, a, a lot of different things that I touched on. Um, I'm going to go to uh, the next item here. So what we're going to look at now is um, what can SAP Enable Now do for you? It still has a WPD acronym, so this one didn't get touched. Uh, but SAP Enable Now, how, what can it do for you? So from the perspective of um, uh, Enable Now, what you're going to see is uh, the, the kind of documentation that can be um, delivered. So any kind of documents. So uh, we can provide Word documents, job help sheets, different items there. Um, also cross-application support, so going across um, any application that you run on your desktop. So it's fundamentally uh, agnostic to the applications that you have um, on hand, so being able to work across any application. Um, also automatic, automatic localization, so translations being done automatically. Um, reusing existing content um, across the platform as well. And then also uh, mobile and social learning. Um, how can this work from a mobile social learning perspective uh, and process uh, automation and acceleration? So what we see normally with our customers is a 62% reduction in help desk tickets from the idea of being able to provide guidance on screen while they're doing their work. Um, so when I need help, ask for help, and my learning or knowledge object, object shows up on the screen to get through that process. 70% um, less on training costs. So uh, what we see here is I'm able to reduce cost um, on my training because I'm able to provide the learning in multiple different forms, um, an e-learning, an LMS course, an on-screen guidance, an application library, a QR code. So letting people consume the content the way that works best for them 
um, at the point of need, as well as also making sure that they're taking those courses through uh, your Success Vectors learning platform as well. Uh, faster process to execution, so getting your, getting your users up to speed faster. So uh, making sure that, yes, they've taken the courses, yes, they've passed, but how do we make sure that once they're on the job, we can ensure their success going through the applications? Um, so hopefully you've seen some of that today. Um, and also fast, faster documentation process as well. Sure. Is there another question? Oh, yes. So we have several. Um, uh, can SAP Enable Now be used on any solution that I run on my desktop? Yes. So um, the, the key here is that you can use this solution across anything that you run on your desktop. So the nice thing there is you have the capability of um, looking at, at this across all solutions, right? So it's not just necessarily for success factors. You could use this on success factors or Word or your SAP solutions, Concord, Hybris, Spendago, right? All these different things that you may have in your landscape. Um, SAP or non-SAP. So we even have customers that are non-SAP customers um, that use this. So they use it on an Oracle platform or they use it on a CAD software. So um, fundamentally, the idea here is that you want to have one solution to be able to create all of your content in across your platform. So instead of needing different solutions to record in different um, different scenarios, have one single solution that you can create your your book pages or your storyline content your screen captures, your point-click application, your performance support, all in one single solution. How many customers use SAP Enable now? So um, currently, and I think on the slide that's being showed right now, so currently we have over 2,000 customers um, using this solution. So um, the, the, the nice thing here is that a lot of people are using the solution. Um, it's actually been around for a while. So it's been in the SAP portfolio for uh, around seven years now. Um, the solution itself was actually, uh, it was called the Tango uh, when we purchased the company. Um, and now obviously it's been rebranded to SAP Enable now. So uh, what you're seeing is um, really SAP investing in a solution that they purchased um, we're really competing across the landscape. So we're, we're not just focused on being like WalkMe or being like a SEMA. We're really trying to make sure that we can fit a holistic approach for our customer um, and that we're really able to span um, all those different solutions that you use. So whether that be, as I said before, the storyline, the SEMA, Captivate, all these different solutions, there's hundreds of them in this space. We really want to be the sol best solution that spans all of those different components with, with one with one um, item. Great. And I think this sort of leads into what you were do, doing with the demo at the end there. Are users able to generate their own content? Is this RBP? Where is the content stored? Yes. So the content is stored. Um, so we have a, 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 an Enable Now um, server. So what you're going to see is you, whether you go cloud or on-prem, there will be a, a, a application server where we'll store your content. Now, when we publish to the Success Factors Learning platform, um, we have a direct integration point where we publish into Success Factors Learning. The content then would move to your iContent server from an LMS perspective. However, your root or source file would still live in WPV, where you then could leverage and create other content pieces. So what does that mean? And let me make sure it's clear. If I'm going to move it to LMS and I'm going to publish to LMS, I would publish and it would go to your iContent server from an LMS. If I'm going to leave it in WPB, I also have other ways of distributing, right? The application library, the on-screen desktop assistant, other ways where I'm going to pull content from WPB server or application or Enable Now server, um, and then able to publish that back to the end user. Great. Well, at this point, I'm going to take a quick break in the Q&A to offer up this little poll. If anyone in the audience is interested in scheduling a one-on-one -on -one demo with more specific questions that you can ask and have answered, I'm going to leave this up there for you. Pretty self-explanatory. Click on yes or no. Um, I'll leave this up for a couple of questions, and then I'll show us the rest of the schedule while we close out our Q&A. But we have several things in the queue. So, Jesse, is this yep. product licensed separately by the user? So it is. So the way that this is licensed is um, by an author or consumption um, if you do on-prem. If you're in the cloud space, um, it's a single license for everyone. So 
it is by named user. Um, the way that that gets licensed, um, obviously by user ID, and then you're able to use all components of the solution. So that would be you could produce, you could consume, you could be in that, that, that desktop assistant piece, the web assistant piece. So all of that is one single price in cloud. For the on-prem version, on-premise version, you would have a author, so someone who would create, and then a consumer or someone who would consume content. Um, so that's uh, the model that that is currently. Great. Um, I've got a couple of questions in here. If you want to um, look through our Q&A widget here, Jesse, I may need your help in deciphering some of this. Um, there's some questions from Accenture about the guide, and is it available for SAP? I don't know if, if you're able to look at the question and get a better handle on what's being asked there versus what I'm able to um, say out loud. Okay, is the guide doing available for SAP? Yeah, so the, the guides are available for SAP or non-SAP. So you can use this in um, the guided tour piece. So um, there's embedded content, and let's make sure this is clear. There is um, embedded content, which we call Web Assistant. That is embedded into S4. Those guides are available. Um, if you want to see those, um, sapfioritrial.com. Um, you can look at those guided tours. It's the green dots that show up that is um, embedded. Uh, but a guided tour can be created fundamentally for anything. So a guided tour could be on success factors or ECC or Concord. You can create those guided tours for any solution um, and, and use those in SAP as well. Great. And then the question above that one about capability with already storyline. Is this? Yeah, so compatibility already with Storyline. So yeah, the way that we create our content is called book pages. Um, we do have capabilities of we can take your Storyline content, bring that into Enable Now, um, and consume. So we can bring in Storyline content um, into the file structure. Um, you can modify it. If you want to modify that content, we do have a few services where we can convert some content. Uh, we have some services around UPK, so if you use UPK, um, content that can be converted. Um, we can import in PowerPoint Word documents um, and convert those into what we call a DKP file. Um, so we do have some capabilities of importing um, content into the solution and then allowing that to be modifiable moving forward. From a storyline perspective, um, we're able to take the content, drop it into our WPB server or application, still deliver that through our application library and consume it. Um, I just can't change that storyline content. Um, if you need to create storyline content, that's what we call book pages. So within Enable Now, we call that a book page component, and book pages are where we would create what storyline would do. We would create book pages. Well, tacking on to that book page question, um, can a book page be downloaded or saved on, on mobile? Yeah. So. Um, so fundamentally with your book pages, you have multiple ways of outputting. So if you want that output to be um, a flat file, you obviously could output that to a PDF and someone can consume as a PDF or a Word document offline, absolutely. Um, you also have the capabilities with the QR codes um, and other mobile devices. So as long as they can get you a URL that uh, allows them to pull that content back depending on where it's at within your environment. So. Um, if it's a protected um, cloud or protected on-prem on on environment, as long as a mobile device has access to your VPN to be able to get inside um, to pull that content, absolutely. Um, the whole idea of the QR code is exactly what you're talking about. So scan the QR code, bring content back to my device so that I can consume it from a mobile device. So on my iPhone, bring up a, a ebook and consume that from, from my actual iPhone. Can Enable Now work on a Citrix desktop? Yes, so we have Citrix integration as well. So um, Citrix uh, Zen app, I believe, is what it's called for the desktop pieces. But there is a Citrix component, so um, it can work on Citrix. Uh, obviously, we would suggest um, if you're using a terminal server like Citrix to um, interact uh, with an application, uh, when you create the content, we obviously um, – always try to tell you create the content on a desktop that has direct access to that application. Um, recording, um, recording the instructions or recording the process on top of the telnet um, creates issues. So um, normally we want people to create the content um, where I can get to that, that application. Um, but you can still distribute that content through Citrix Network where you can still have 
um, the same type of uh, support that you would on a desktop. What type of animations like voice and avatars are available? How friendly is it to end users to create e-learnings? Yeah, so a lot of um, a lot of things there. So there is one thing that if you haven't seen, so if you go to um, SAP uh, or enable-now.sap.com, so enable-now.sap.com, and I'm sure we'll send out some of these links afterwards, um, you can go to uh, what we call our info center. Our info center has a lot of information on this product. How does it work? Um, what are all the different components? We do have avatar capabilities. So from an avatar perspective, um, you can embed avatars into the solution. We have a couple styles. We have a cartoon style and more of a realistic style. Um, but the whole idea of other solutions of having avatars to be able to point and move around on the screen so it's a little bit more personal, that component is part of our book page. We also have um, uh, other components as well um, in there around uh, these types of solutions. So creating the content, when you go into the Info Center, you're going to see Enable Now content enabling you on how to use Enable Now. So fundamentally, it's online training on how to use the solution itself. Um, I'll say from, I was a customer in, in my past life, uh, the biggest risk we have in this space, because the solution is so easy to use, um, content can get out of control. So um, you want to make sure that you have some process in place to control who's creating content, where is it being published, what are your standards, what are your guidelines. Um, the simplicity is what I would say kind of, you know, the golden nugget here is super easy to use. Um, however, it can be a risk because the more people you get in there because it's so easy to use, um, you can start to create, a, you know, a, a sandbox of all this different content that no one knows what it's for. A fair point there. All right. Is Web Assistant content edited in Producer? How easy is it to publish back to S4? Yes. So the way that the Web Assistant is actually um, uh, changed is through um, a new 100% SaaS model. So the way that the um, Web Assistant con component is actually edited now is through uh, a Web component. So you actually launch uh, the uh, carousel or that web assistant piece, um, and if you have the right write token, you then can modify or edit that content. So that is actually done through um, a, a write token that allows you to have what looks like a pencil show up in the carousel. Once you have the pencil, you're actually modifying it in a true SaaS cloud environment. So it's different than the producer. However, we can launch um, your other content from the carousel or the web assistant um, that you've created in Producer. How difficult is it to convert SPP content to SEN? Is there an import function? So there is, um, there's a few options that we have. So there are some um, services that we provide um, through our uh, consulting partners. So we do have um, services where if a script, um, those scripts can then convert the content from um, SPP back over into Enable Now content. Um, there are some restrictions there, but most of the time we have a script that can get you from where you're at with SPP, move some items over into SCN um, through services that we have that we can provide. Great. Well, we are out of time, and we will follow up with any additional questions offline. But I do want to say thank you for joining us today. A big thanks to our speaker, Jesse Bernal, and to you, our audience, we thank you for your time and participation. Would you like to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one demo with SAP? In a few moments, a voluntary survey will pop up asking for your feedback on today's session and includes a way to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. This is a great way to reach out and ask for more personalized information, as well as to help us shape our future webinars. Just a reminder that today's session has been recorded, and we'll be sending out a link to the replay in the coming weeks. We hope that you'll join us for next week's demo, which will cover JAM collaborations. There's a link to register for that demo, along with the rest of the series located in that resource list. Again, thank you for joining in today's session. Have a great day.